Good morning, everyone. Brian here. It's about 4.30 a.m. just after, actually, here in Florida. I've um, uh, been up for about the past two hours thinking about this. Uh, my mind is racing with, with this uh, new idea about moonlight and uh, the possible capacitance of the moon. Is capacitance a word? I don't know. But uh, I think it is. But uh, yeah, my mind is racing. I'm just going to have to go until I face plant because I can't stop thinking about this. It's too amazing. Um, people have made great comments both on uh, Facebook and YouTube about, about this this topic uh, awesome suggestions uh, uh, what, I, what I want to talk about is the, the cynic uh, uh, made a comment on YouTube about deserts and, and temperature swing um, and how uh, in, you know, in the desert in the daytime you get it just gets very hot you know well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit and then at night it gets very very cold like down to freezing temperatures. And uh, I was thinking about why that is, and I, I remember that, and the reason's got to be because there's no moisture, there's no water out there, because water holds heat very well. Is another thing my dad ingrained in my head as a kid is, is you know you, that's why you see fog above above ponds when when the, the, the air temperature drops very quickly because the water retains the heat that it had. And uh, if you live near the coast, you know in the springtime it takes a while for the water to get warm as you get into the summer months and then as you go into the fall months when the air starts to get cold the water is still warm because it holds on to the heat. So and so it also takes longer for water to heat up. It, water, water is a, a very good insulator uh, so to say. and. Uh, so I was thinking about this, and uh, somebody else posted under I can't can't remember who it was uh, made made a comment about you know heat escaping from from the desert. You know, is it really is it really black body radiation going out into space? And I was thinking about that. Well, yeah, because I mean the heat's got to go somewhere, right? I mean, where's the heat going? Uh, I mean, really, where's it can't? I mean, it's got to it's got to go somewhere. It can't just go out to colder areas of Earth because I mean they're also cooling down too. So it's got to go up into space. That's what I've always thought. But then. I realized, thinking about this, laying in bed, well, there's kind of a problem that there's a thermosphere in the way that's about, oh, I don't know, at least 400 kilometers thick with very high temperatures. That's, uh, that, that's an issue there. Do you agree? I mean, the, how's the heat going to radiate up from the desert through this? How it goes the cold? Definitely not. We're, we're kind of insulated against space at that point. That's what holds heat into Earth. So where's the heat going? It's got to go somewhere. I don't know. A little more evidence. Still, we need to prove this. But another thing I was thinking about is what is a capacitor? Um, actually, what is it? Uh, and also, Ank, Ank, backing up, Ank came in again. Ank, uh, you got to tell me how to say your name. But uh, with another great point about capacitors. Um, and I had to look this up, I had to wake up and look this up too. Apparently, capacitors, um, they don't charge evenly. Uh, the, the, the rate of charge and discharge varies, and that's exactly what the moon phases do. Uh, he pointed out that you know, if you look at the moon calendar, he actually posted a link in, in the comment to the moon calendar, which is so interesting. You know, when, the, when, the, when the light first starts to appear, as you get that little sliver as you're heading towards the, the waxing crescent or the uh, waiting. Uh, I get them mixed up, but you know, it, it's it's... Basically, you know, you get like one percent of, of of light, and then and then five percent, and then twelve percent. I mean, this is going up in consecutive days. It doesn't. It's not a uniform, um, uh, linear. Is the word I'm looking for. Um, um, open opening of the light or the of light appearing on the moon. It kind of jumps up and then, then jumps down. It's like it's uh, almost maybe exponential. Um, I'd, I'd have to look at it more, but it's not. It's not linear, and. And supposedly that's what capacitors do too. So this is this is really interesting. But I got uh, I got my circuits book out, um, basic circuits book. I held on to this one too, um, just to read the definition of a capacitor. It says a capacitor is a circuit element that consists of two conducting surface surfaces separated by a non-conducting or dielectric material. A simplified capacitor and its electrical. Well, oh, now it's just describing the figure, but. Um, there are many types of capacitors, and they're all categorized by types of type of dielectric material used used between the conducting plates. So what I'm thinking about is is what are, are the sun and the moon the plates, and then there's some kind of dielectric material between them, or is the moon the dielectric material? I mean, this is just something to think about. It, it's it, it's basically like an insulated material, something that doesn't conduct. 
And so just throwing that idea out there, get more people thinking, because as I've said before, we're all working together here. So many people have good ideas and then, and I can be the guinea pig on camera, just reading all these ideas, trying to put them together and then throwing them back out there and, and getting more people's input on this. And we, and we can keep going and, and, and charging towards truth with all this stuff. And uh, um, on, on Facebook, uh, I think Stefan Ludwig, uh, I made a comment about lenses with moonlight. You know, when with sunlight, you can take a magnifying glass and and uh, you know you can you can set a piece of paper on fire if you focus the, the sunlight. I used to do this with a kid. I think every kid has done this. You know, kids burn ants and stuff. You know, you know, boys just doing mischievous things. Um, I don't think I ever burned ants though. But uh, um, so what happens if you do that with moonlight? Has anybody ever tried that? And I immediately I thought, well, what if you did that on a candle flame? So I tried to draw this as a really crappy lens. This is supposed to, could be a magnifying glass or some type of lens. What if you, you know, I guess if the moon, if the light is actually traveling up, if it's pulling light away from the, the flame, I mean, really we can't see which way the light's moving because it moves too fast, but I get, you're still focusing the light. Would it, would it actually intensify the flame? Is this the way we could actually see the flame intensify over another flame that's covered from moonlight? Or I mean, even if they're both exposed to moonlight and you use a lens on one, this is another thing I really want to try. I'm going to have to get a good magnifying glass to do this. And uh, I think there was another point I wanted to make. Um, so many thoughts. I could probably ramble for hours in front of the camera here, but I don't want to waste any better, too much of everybody's time. Um, man, what was the other thing? Oh yeah, I want to point out that I, I, we're not measuring the temperature of the light. I said that in the first episode because I, I, I was too excited. I mean, it is semantics, but we're measuring the temperature of the air. Just like, you know, I explained in, in, in the Balls Up Physics episode 4, is the thermometer measures the, the kinetic energy uh, of the substance. So we can't measure the, directly measure the temperature of the light. So just keep that in mind. I'll probably say that again when I'm talking quickly. We're measuring the temperature of the air, so the moonlight is actually cooling down the air as opposed to the sun. You know, it's definitely true that if if you if you measure the temperature of air in direct sunlight, it's gonna it's gonna be warmer than the temperature of air in the shade. So, what we're looking for is is it, is it the exact opposite with moonlight? And so I've also been looking at uh, FLIR or L F L I R uh, infrared cameras too because. Uh, I really want to do this right, and there's, there's some deals out there on Amazon, so uh, if anybody's got one of those and they want to use this and try to try to position it on a line between, between uh, moonlight and shade and, and just record the results somehow, that would be great, um, because the more, more we can show that the moonlight cools the air or cools whatever it's shining on, um, the better. Uh, and then uh, one more, uh, somebody else made a comment about how, how uh, clouds look around the moon you know and, and sometimes you, know, you see those really cloudy nights it looks like there's a sometimes it looks like the, the moon there's like a hole in the clouds you know like you always you see I see this a lot I mean especially since I've been just studying flat earth theory I've been watching the moon on cloudy nights and people talk about how it looks like clouds go behind the moon well what if it's absorbing energy from the clouds you know H2O I mean well, clouds are basically water there's a lot of energy in hydrogen, you know, H2 gas, hydrogen gas, is, there's an extreme amount of energy. I mean, that's what happened to the, the Hindenburg. Um, you know, it was filled with hydrogen and it blew up. Uh, that's why we fill bumps with helium now. And so, uh, you know, these, these are things to think about. I'm speculating, yes, of course. I mean, this, basically I'm saying the moon is eating clouds, so I mean, that's, that's, that's out there. But it's just things to think about, more ideas to throw out there, the more ideas we can get together and keep, keep working together and uh, charging towards truth. I keep saying that, it's getting corny. But uh, yeah, just want to record some ideas. Can't sleep, so uh, hopefully I can fall asleep sometime this weekend. But uh, I hope everyone out there is have, having a, a good time with this, has as much fun as I am. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll talk to everybody soon. All right, peace.